Hello and welcome to McLaren Port Huron's Today's Health. I'm your host, Barb Winters. You know, our program today is going to be of interest to women of all ages because we're talking about advanced treatment for uterine conditions. And joining me for this discussion is board certified OBGYN, Dr. Stacy Tramp. Dr. Tramp, welcome back to Today's Health. Thank you for having me. Let's start with the anatomy of the uterus. Sure. So when we think, if we, we have a slide that we can show so patients can kind of follow along or um, our viewers can follow along. When we think about it, the middle portion right here is our uterus and that's kind of where the, the home of the baby starts more than anything. And when we have these tubes that come across the fallopian tubes, which are so are pseudo connected to the, the ovary, and then when we come down, this is the cervix itself when we look at. So when our patients have a pap test in the office, these, this is where we're taking the cells. And then sometimes we'll do a, an additional swab inside to get cells from um, the inside where we can't really see when we're doing a speculum exam in the office itself. So this is a very normal appearing ovary, um, uterus, and fallopian tubes. So what are the most common uh, conditions that affect the uterus? So a lot of times patients will come in with complaints of irregular menstrual cycles, and I think that's the number one complaint of patients coming into the office. And when we're thinking about that, there's lots of different conditions that we can think about. Um, we'll think about, are they painful, heavy cycles? And that can lead us down a path of thinking they possibly have endometriosis or tissue that's normally seen on the inside of the uterus, on the outside of the uterus and the pelvis. There's also a condition that can cause this called uterine fibroids, benign muscle tumors of the, the uterus that can cause um, um, uterine issues as well. Well, let's talk a little bit then about uh, endometriosis, and you told us a little bit about what it is, so can you yeah. review that for us? So normally when we have a period, our, the lining of the uterus gets nice and thick, and then we go through our cycle, and at the end, it's shed. If we have endometriosis, that means we have some of that uterine tissue that's normally on the inside that's shed during a period on the outside, whether it's on the ovary, on the fallopian tube, sometimes it can be on the bowel, sometimes it can be on the rectum, and even on the bladder itself. And if you can imagine, during the menstrual cycle, that tissue gets very swollen, and it, um, at the end, it outgrows its blood supply and it's shed during a period. That tissue does the same thing on the inside of the, the, the pelvis also. So if you have endometrial tissue on the bladder or the ovary or even on the rectum, you can imagine that there's a good amount of discomfort that happens with that because that tissue will become swollen and it will actually bleed based on the hormonal support of the body. So it can be very uncomfortable for patients. It does sound very uncomfortable. Is, what yeah. causes it? There's a lot of theories about what causes endometriosis, but we don't really know truly what causes it. There is one theory that states that because we have the uterus and the fallopian tubes are an open connection, sometimes that tissue that's inside the uterus can go through the fallopian tubes and kind of implant in the pelvis a term called retrograde menstruation, kind of going backwards. Instead of going out the cervix and into the vagina, it goes through the fallopian tubes and into the pelvis. Um, but there's lots of different theories, but that's the one that's most commonly accepted. Some people feel also it can be genetic. My mom has endometriosis, so could I possibly have endometriosis? And we do see it in family lines a lot. So, so what are the risks of endometriosis? There, there's um, research going on that some people feel there might be a slight increased risk of cancer, possibly with endometriosis. Um, so those are patients that definitely need to be followed closely. They need to have a good relationship with their OBGYN and make sure they're going for their annual exams and discussing their symptoms and what's happening with their body with their OBGYN. Do you ever like grow out of endometriosis or do you have it for a period and then it Not goes necessarily. away? Not necessarily. You always have it. So if okay. you have those lesions out there, you're always going to have it. But that being said, there are some patients who are asymptomatic. They, you know, they don't have the classic symptoms of pain and discomfort. So you don't really know about it. And say you have the patient that you go in to do a tubal ligation. So laparoscopically, you, they want their tubes tied. You go in there and you see all of this inflama um, inflammation, you see some adhesions and classic signs in the pelvis of endometriosis and you say to your patient, do you have painful periods? And they're like, no. So there is those patients that really just don't have symptoms. And then truly, if you get to the point of menopause where you stop producing hormones and you stop having periods, that tissue will shut down a little bit and your period or your pain and discomfort should, should go away at that time. Okay, so how is endometriosis related to infertility? Good question. So patients who come in and they're unable to try for, or they're not, they've been unable to achieve pregnancy um, when they come in, one of the things that you think of is, is their scarring in the pelvis. 
as you can imagine, those implants of abnormal tissue, if it's by the ovary, and if my arm is the fallopian tube and it has little fingers on it, the ovary sits right here and when you ovulate, that egg is released and the fingers pick up that, that egg and the tube spasms and it kind of moves in. If you have scarring where that tube is scarred down to the pelvis and it's unable to grab that egg, then it can't do what it's supposed to do to um, you know, be in the spot for fertilization. So mostly it's inflammation and adhesions or scarring in the pelvis that causes infertility for these patients. We're gonna talk lots more about this, but first we're gonna take a break. Sounds good. <laughs> 